Hello friends, welcome to our channel and here we are with a new episode to cover an interesting topic as well. Over the past few months, we have been closely scrutinizing all the space-related news in Europe and that certainly raises a few questions. Can Europe seriously compete with the US and China in the near future? What specific plans have they been making lately that we are looking at them as a competitor? Will they be able to give a massive boost back in the space race? So let's try to dig down to find a few facts and a lot of statements by the influential people in the business to find the answers. The United Kingdom is showing their ambition in space by announcing a whopping nearly $2 billion funding for their upcoming military space programs. On the 1st of February 2022, the UK published a new military space policy and announced proposals to invest $1.9 billion in the space sector for the upcoming 10 years. The Fresh Space Plan concentrates on the dangers from anti-satellite weapons and calls for attention to the role of the UK's private space industry in increasing skills for the military and powering economic growth. In this context, we must check what UK's Defense Secretary Ben Wallace thinks about this new investment. Wallace said, This significant investment will help to ensure the UK remains at the forefront of space innovation and one step ahead of our competitors. Jeremy Quinn, Minister of Defense Procurement, has also put some light on the present military space fundings for the UK, saying that the latest funding was especially concentrated for the satellites in low Earth orbit, which provides intelligence and military surveillance data. He also named two programs which will provide funding for such satellites. One such program is ISTARI which is directed for funding of advanced laser communications technology for high-speed delivery of data. The other one is the Minerva program, under which the UK Space Command will test with a network of satellites that can autonomously collect, process, and disseminate data from the UK and allied satellites to assist military actions. Quinn is quite delighted with these programs. He said, Istari and Minerva will be the building blocks we are starting with a small number of satellites, we will be looking to bring together packs of satellites that can work together and learn how you control the formation of satellites. So these seem to be a significant step forward from the UK. That looks promising. Now let's try to analyze some statements made by their other big shots. Air Vice Marshal Harv Smith, Director of Space at the Ministry of Defense, said that the new military space plan opens up their ability to talk to their partners and set their priorities. The ministry spent several months analyzing the dangers in space. Smith said, We are planning for the worst and hoping for the best. We need to deepen our ability to conduct space domain analysis and understand what's there, what it's doing, and more importantly, what's the intent. Sir Mike Wigston, Chief of Air Staff, Air Chief Marshal, said that the new space policy indicates the truth that there are nefarious, reckless activities being conducted in space and the United Kingdom wishes to be at the front of confirming space is accessible for all. Wigston also said, this is not about weaponizing space, it's protecting our interests. Everyone seems to be pretty ambitious and confident, but we must keep an eye on the strategies, how the UK draws plans for their space startups. Well, the UK also has some good plans to make their space startups to sustain in the hardened space race. On the 25th of January, officials from the European Commission, European Investment Fund, and European Investment Bank jointly announced that they were assigning around $1.12 billion for the upcoming five years to a program named Cassini, which will provide prior funding for European space companies, especially the startup ones. In his speech at the 14th European Space Conference, Chris Peters, who is the Vice President of the European Investment Bank, said that European space entrepreneurs feel that there is a lack of private financing sources. They, therefore, tend to keep an eye on private capital outside of the European Union, especially the United States. 
European public financial instruments play an essential role in unlocking private capital for the space sector. And for the Cassini program, it's good news that Thierry Breton, the European Union Commissioner of Space Policy, Peters and Elaine Goddard, Chief Executive of the European Investment Fund, have signed a joint statement securing their partnership on this program. Till now, UK space growth was good enough but not so astonishing. So it brings a question in our mind about UK's lack of progression in space. Now we get some concrete idea on the matter from Joseph Oshbacher's statement, who is the Director General of the European Space Agency. Oshbacher added, Europe is lacking access to funding in order to allow industry to flourish. Europe is full of ideas, it's full of energy, but they need the means to transform these ideas into projects, into programs, and into activities. Joseph Ashbacher, already mentioned previously, will be on the moon and we believe we will be living there. We will use the moon as an economic zone. This is a new frontier. He had also pointed out the main flaw in UK's space developments. He lamented that Europe has no rocket of its own, which can be used for manned missions to explore the next frontier, which is, of course, space. Most of the time, Europe has to depend on either American or Russian rockets for any manned launch. And in the present decade, many interesting manned space programs have been planned to the moon and space by NASA, CASC, and some other space agencies. Ashbacher puts forth the question, do we want, as Europeans, to be part of it, or do we want to be watching others going to the moon? Europe attempted to have its own manned spacecraft before. The Hermes program, however, was canceled in 1992 after interruptions and failure. Chances for getting Europe's own manned launcher is still in question. Yet there is something promising to look forward to. As signs of good hope, Ariane Group, a European space company owned by Airbus and French group Safran, recently announced that they're on the way to develop a reusable two-stage launcher which can support manned launches. Philip Baptiste, who's the president of France's CNES space agency, commented that Ariane Group's future launcher would pave the way for Moon and Mars missions. As far as sources state, a ministerial meeting in the European Space Agency will be held in November to lay out priorities and budgets for the upcoming years. Great announcements from some big names about highly futuristic and ambitious ideas have been made, and now we just have to wait to see how they're implemented in reality. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.